And welcome to Homebrew Wild and Cheap. So I must apologize for taking four months to make another video. I have been super busy in work and super busy trying to get my company up and started, as well as playing the stock market and generally, uh, you know, trying to live a life. It is very difficult to try and balance everything, uh, as it turns out. So, uh, what I'm going to be doing, uh, because I have been keeping a kind of, kind of tab on the uh, comments, Thanks to my shiny new phone, instead of the potato that would barely send a text message. So I'm going to be doing a brew diary. Uh, this is going to take approximately 30 days. Uh, that means that we're going to be making a sweet wine. So at the end of the 30 days, when we put it in the bottle, you are able to drink it. It's not bad. It will get better with age, but at the same time, sometimes you just got to have a quick drink. So, what I'm going to be using is Perfectly Imperfect Mixed Berries from Tesco's. The total cost for two kilos of this mixed fruit, which is strawberries, raspberries, and blackberries, was seven pound. That's not so bad. I've got a huge tub of sugar, but I'll only be using a kilo. So I've got a kilo bag to one side. That's going to boost up the alcohol, because who wants to have a 3% alcohol or less? Maybe you do. That's up to you. Um, we're going to be using, funny enough, I'm going to be showing you the sterilizing process, the making pro you know, everything, basically from start to finish in this brew diary. So, without further ado, I suppose we should get started. So, the first step that you are going to need to do in any brewing endeavor is sterilizing. It's on the go. So, sterilizing, as you know, I do like the simple things in life. Dish soap, bleach, can't go wrong with it. It's worked for bleh, countless amounts of homebrew, and it's going to keep working for countless amounts of homebrew. If you don't want to use bleach, you can use the uh, sanitizery stuff I just got here. You can use counting tablets. Supposedly, these are good for sterilizing. The times that I've tried it, is with they don't really do what I want it to do. Just personally, I have had more failure with this than with good old-fashioned bleach. So. It's up to you, or you can use that Star San no wash sanitizer that does the same thing. Now, it's very important that you need to sterilize stuff because we want to give our yeast a fighting chance to outpopulate everything else and kill it with the alcohol goodness so we don't get mold or anything like that. So, very simply, we've got dish soap, which is fairy. And you just pour a little bit in, like so. And then you've got Bleach! Good old bleach. So if you read destructions on the side, it will tell you... It's approximately... Six bases directly. There we go. We are working on the idea of work surfaces, bins and floors. So that is approximately 300 ml of bleach to 5 litres of water. Yay! So, in it goes. To the top. This is my other jug here, which I'm going to be using to sterilize my airlocks. So I went and bought some cheesy airlocks because uh, I was actually gifted a load more of these Demijohn bottles. So it seems rude not to use them. So in goes a lovely glug. And this is just going to help sterilize and help everything out perform. Get the bleach away, don't drink it, get out of the way. Mmm, pretty. So the reason that I've put the bleach in first and done this is because sterilizing usually takes the longest. To make sure everything is super sterile, leave it for about 20 minutes. You can leave it longer if you like, but 20 minutes. It's the same as using Milton sterilizing tablets for baby bottles. The solution is active for about 24 hours and then it needs to be changed. So here are my lovely airlocks, looking airlocky. And of course, the rubber bung. So bleach does destroy rubber, so... Oh well, it will still do for a long time. So now we basically set this to one side, and I will start cleaning this out with my lovely bottle brush. Which you can buy in most places, just to get it in and get it swish around. And that's where the fairy washing up liquid will go nuts. But basically the bleach is going to do the main work. Which is nice. So... I've got my pan. If you're doing this method of extraction, which I'm going to be using heat, because it is quicker. 
It also sterilizes and kills off the yeast and helps get the fruit flavors out. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can do exactly the same process, put it in a big tub, add uh, one Camden tablet to your liquid. Where is it? These are Camden tablets. It's old. I should really know these because I very rarely use them. And that just kills off any wild yeast that is in with our fruit that's frozen. Because we don't want the yeast or anything else to play havoc with what we're going to add in. So, I'm going to dump the fruit in my pan. Yummy! One lovely kilo of our imperfectly perfect mixed berries. Yeah, whatever. Basically, it smells really good, so who doesn't want mixed berry wine? And the fact that it was kind of cheap, even better! There we go, in goes the slush. Oh, it smells really good actually. It, um, funny enough, smells like strawberries, raspberries and blackberries all together in sweet dream. Yum, yum, yum. Anyway, so, there we go, looking at our pan, lovely. Now we're gonna add some boiling water in. Mm, lovely, frozen. We're gonna add some boiling water in. Now this is because, one, we're going to be boiling this just to kill off all the yeasts. Two, we want to extract as much juice and flavors from these berries as possible. And three, because it's also going to sterilize it, so even better for us. So I put 1.6 liters of boiled water in the pan. Now the reason I only add in about half the amount ever into this is because when we're going to put it in the demijohn, we can top it up with cold water and it cools down quicker, which is nice. Right, so we have now got a well, it's actually only semi-warm because the boiling water counteracted the ice, so it's kind of evened out. But it's just a mushy pulp right now. So on the hob it goes, and we're going to boil it. Heat it up, because it's going to destroy the fibers and the structures of the berries that have gone in there. So we can take it out. You can ferment on the pulp. Pulp? Yeah. You can ferment on the pulp if you like, but you're not going to get as much alcohol in the finished product, mainly because this is going to take up room in your demijohn. So uh, yeah, to answer some of the questions as we go that I've come across that I haven't answered to. Mmm. And I'm going to do my usual. Right. It has now come to the boil. I have now turned it off. It smells fantastic. So. At this point, you have got a lot of options that you can add in. You could add in, for instance, pectolase when this is cooled down to about 20 degrees. And what the pectolase will do will help clear out the pectin, destroy it down, break it down into smaller bits so you don't get pectin haze. I'm not worried about pectin haze. If you are, then you add in one teaspoon of this to this when this is cooled down to about 20 degrees or room temperature and that will make sure your wine is lovely and clear. But since this is going to be a sweet, quick drinking berry wine, I'm not gonna worry about the pectolase. It's not needed. Just so you know, um, you can make additions to your wine to give it extra body, extra flavor, extra everything. One of those, the ones that I would recommend if you want to go a little bit more fancy is spending the two pound 50 and getting this. This is from Wilkinson's, or Wilco, and this is grape juice, Concentrate, uh, specially designed for wine using wine grapes. Obviously not the best wine grapes, otherwise they would be turned into wine, I presume. So, but you add these into fruit wine to give it more body, a little bit more sugar, and because grapes contain all the nutrients that are needed for yeast to ferment, it also adds in extra nutrients. Lovely. 
Fortunately, I have been adding, because of this berry mix, I've got strawberries in here. And I have found, personally, that strawberries, in a strawberry wine, do not need nutrients. Uh, the strawberries contain all of the nutrients that the yeast needs. And yeah, basically adding in the yeast nutrient into strawberry wine makes it explode and makes it very uh, volatile. It all pukes out the top. Not what I'm after. And it only really does it for the first 24 or 48 hours while using nutrient. There's enough in here, so I'm not going to use that. It's up to you if you want to use it, but I'm not going to for this particular wine. It is simple. That's what we're going for. So while this is cooling down, I've got my Demijohn over here, which I have just left for the last 25-ish, no, 30 minutes now, because uh, funny enough, it took a few takes. And now I'm going to sterilize and clean this. Well, finish sterilizing and cleaning it. Let's get, get it right, get it right, Lee, you know. We are over by my lovely sink. Lovely. And I've got my Demijohn, which has been sterilized. As you can see, the uh, dish soap that I put in has dissolved into the liquid. Lovely, lovely. And I've got my bottle brush, which is about to go into a bleach and water solution. It's already clean, so this is going to make sure this is sterilized. And basically, I'm going to go around and beat the big Jesus out of it. Being careful not to get bleach in your eyes. It's like, since this Demijohn was already clean, it's pretty much good to go, but if you've just finished brewing, you're going to have the crust that's at the bottom and little bits on the side and near the top. So you're just going through and cleaning it. The better you clean it, the less likely you are to have an infection of any type. And just the one that you want, which is the yeast. There we go. When you remove the brush, I put my hands over it because it will flick. Bleach and washing up liquid. And I have lost many a t-shirt doing that. So uh, just bear that in mind. So now the outside is complete, uh, the inside, sorry, is completely sterilized. You can see it's beautiful and clean and lovely and just a little bit of soap on it. The outside doesn't really matter as much though, you can give it a bit of a wipe. Lovely. So since I've got this bleach solution, I'll give it a around here and it also sterilizes my sink. Lovely. Very handy. So let's dump this out. And now we've got a lovely, pretty clean stuff. So we're pretty clean stuff. Pretty there. Now we have a pretty clean damage jump. I'm going to rinse it out to remove all the bubbles and the traces of soap because I don't want them in there. I don't know about you, but soap, wine, doesn't sound that tasty. Now this is looking pretty damn good, give it a sniff. Doesn't smell bleachy, so it's definitely clean and rinsed. Now while we wait for our lovely berries to do their thing, I've got my top half of my airlock, which has also been sterilized in just bleach because it was already clean and pre-packaged. And now we're gonna put it together. Needs a little bit of force. Just a smidgen, just to push it all the way down. Add a little bit of water. And stick it on the top. Now what this is going to do is, this is now sterile in the few seconds, basically, that this was open and allowed to have air in it, because it's always got air in it, there's a very, very slight contamination. 
nowhere near as much as there would have been before. So our yeast basically has stands a fighting chance because we're going to add an ass ton of it in, comparatively. We'll outperform everything else and sterilize the inside, just to make sure. Great. So, back over there. Oh, so it has been 45 minutes, and as you can tell, it is still rather warm, but it is able to be touched now, so it's not too boiling hot. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a rough filtration, uh, because I did have a comment about why do we filter, or why do I filter out all the solids first. So, I'm going to show you. It's going to be a lot easier. So I've got here a sterilized pan and colander type thing. I got my jug which was sterilized and basically I'm just going to remove the bulk of the solids but as you can see look at that lovely color. That is a pretty color. So on this goes and then we're just going to filter out some of the bigger bits and splash a bit everywhere because you know that's fun. There we go. So basically, I just have to let this drain through. And then out the bottom should be mostly strained. The large chunks that will be removed. Which is pretty nice. And then basically, we're going to add it into our nice demijohn. It is a bit warm, but eh, it should be fine. There we go. There's the first batch. Doesn't matter if it goes back in. So here we go. Let us add our rough strain pulp into here. Basically, I'm just going to go through and roughly filter this, just to remove the largest of the chunks. Got my little spoon so I can move the smaller bits out of the way. Yummy! And basically, I'm just going to keep doing this until this is filled up and this is empty. I'll see you in a couple! So, this is what it looks like after you finish filtering it roughly and putting it in the demijohn. Now there are lots of bits in here. I mean, I'll bring this a bit closer. You may be able to see, hopefully, you can see all these little seedy pippy things in here. So I've left these in on purpose instead of filtering them out. So you will actually see what's gonna happen over the course of the month as this brews. So first things first, I'm gonna top this up, up to the rim here. And the reason I'm doing that is so I get 4.5 liters or one UK gallon. Uh, obviously, American gallons are smaller, so you'll need to adjust your recipe accordingly. Uh, it's a litre less, so you need to basically, yeah, you need to put less in. No. You keep the fruit the same, and you just adjust the sugar to 750 grams instead of a kilo. And that will get you the same alcoholic concentration as we have here. If you like it a bit stronger, then you can just add, keep the extra kilo. It will make it up to, let me see, uh, about 14-15%. Roughly, this is just going off like quick mind maths. So, this is the big stuff that I've taken out. As you can see here, it's not that much considering there was uh, two kilos of fruit. This is now basically warm mush, which I'm gonna store and keep in the freezer because I'm gonna be doing uh, another video with it. Yay. So, I'm gonna top this up with some fresh cold water from my lovely, what's it called? Jug, that's the word. So I've got my water which I used from my sterilized jug from the beginning where I sterilized this. This was sterile at the time and it has lovely lovely stuff in it and just top it up to the top mark with cold water. And there we go. So now I have to put this on and leave this to cool down to pitching temperature. It's nearly there, it's still a little bit warm. Right, so this is now cooled down to about 20 odd degrees. Roughly, it's very slightly warm, but it is in acceptable tolerances for yeast because it's under 30, depending on your yeast strain. But yeah, this is basically, it's about 22, 23 degrees, fine for pitching yeast. 
So what I've got here is I've got expressed yeast. Express wine yeast compound. Ooh, yeah. So it is basically, it's already got most of the stuff already in it. Uh, if not, you can use normal yeast. I would suggest doing a berry wine using a red wine yeast, uh, mainly like a Bordeaux. It will ferment slightly slower, but you will get more of a fruity taste that comes from the yeast. For simplicity, I've got this because you can buy it for like a pound and it does everything. A bit like Universal. So it is a very simple case. I've already sterilized my worktop again, hence why it's not red and covered in gloop. And I've got my clean spoon and I've got my brand new yeast. So basically, I'm going to take a teaspoon of this, approximately, and just dump it in. A little bit went over the side. And that's basically it hitched. So on goes the airlock. Give it a little swirl. And in theory, in about 20 minutes, this is going to start activating the yeast and it will start to divide and be lovely. So, that's all added in. Let's get our hydrometer, which I just have to go and wash. Lame. Had to wash it it's because I sterilized it and hadn't cleaned off the bleach. So, it's up to the rim here. Normally, you use one of those little testing things, but I prefer this. So, let's see what our potential alcohol could possibly be. Well, we're in the blue, and it says 70. Which is, funny enough, eh, came out at 11% potential alcohol here. So, that is 1.070. There we go. Um, it's roughly got, according to the hydrometer, 180 grams of sugar per litre in this, because there's five litres, so roughly tells you how much sugar it is per litre. And just double check, just to make sure. And yeah, it's saying the same twice. So there we go. Since I haven't added in any preservatives and just a little bit of yeast, that's very nice. It's got strawberries, then you've got a hint of raspberry, and then you've got like a mm, very mildly tanniny undertone of blackberry. Not bad for seven pound for the fruit. So on goes our lovely uh, airlock. See, my brain isn't working now. So on goes the airlock, and basically, I'm gonna come back later on, and uh, we're gonna start the video diary. So you get to see this from start to finish. Uh, see what happens if you ferment on unfiltered pulp. And hopefully this is going to, uh, yeah, you're going to love it. That's the plan. If not, 